Okay, sadly, we are back at the syllabus. Um, the course objectives, uh, I've lifted them there. I'm going to really stress the uh, African American, the Mexican American uh, experience, the encounters with Anglo Americans. I'm going to talk about Texas in a global sense. Uh, Texas also is very significant globally. Of course, Houston is the absolute center of the world oil business. Uh, so Texas economically, I think it, it, it would, its economy would probably be in the top 10 globally if it was uh, a nation. So Texas is really important. And, you know, all of us, all of us have grown up in this kind of raw, raw Texas and Texas are Texas and all this. And to me, it gets a little cloying at times. Uh, it, it becomes kind of, oh, can just lay off a little bit. But Texas actually is super, super important. And what I'm gonna try to get across in this course is to explain to you why Texas is important uh, and how it got that way uh, without the cheerleading that often goes with Texas history. Um, but I think Texas is actually much more interesting than the raw, raw Texas would have you believe. Um, so anyway, so that's what the, the point of this course is. Now, of course, everyone in the class is interested in how I'm going to grade you. So this is how I do it. I've done this for years, and uh, it's worked pretty well. First of all, I quiz you every week. Uh, and the quizzes count 34% uh, uh, of your grade. I had to make it 34%, so it added up to 100. And the lowest quiz is going to be dropped. And um, the reason that uh, I quiz you every week is that I want you to keep up with the reading. And I was a college student once, and I know I never did the reading unless I was facing a deadline. And I just think in this course, which is not a hard course, if you really keep up with it, you'll, you should do quite well in this course or, or you know, a B or an A. Uh, but if you don't keep up, you'll get behind. It'll be miserable and yeah. So I learned a long time ago, you have to kind of force students to keep up with the reading. And so that's why I quiz you every week. And the quizzes are a, a, a big component of the grade. Now, for most people, the quizzes really help them overall uh, with their grades, but we'll see uh, about that in this course. Now, it should be the same. They're multiple choice, by the way. Uh, everything's multiple choice in this course. Then I give two midterms. The second midterm is really a final. And uh, those are both 33% uh, of the grade. So super straightforward uh, way you're tested. Okay, quizzes every week, um, uh, midterm in the middle of the semester, and what I call midterm two, which is really the final, uh, which is after the semester ends. There's extra credit, which I'll talk about. Uh, I just ask you to go to a historical site and take a picture of yourself and email me. And for that extra credit, uh, I add two points to your final grade, which is pretty generous, two points to your final average. It, for many students, has made a difference between an A and a B or a C uh, and also our C and a B. Um, one thing about midterms that I forgot to say, uh, midterms you can use an index card for the midterms. The thing about online is one would think that it's easy to cheat in an online class. And I, I, you're not being supervised and all that kind of a thing. But here's the irony about it online. Um, they're timed, the, the tests are timed. Now, if, if you, uh, have gone to student services and you ask for extra time, of course, you'll get as much time as you need. My daughter uh, gets extra time on her test, for instance. But if, if you're trying to cheat on the midterm and you're going through your notes or the books, you're going to run out of time on the test. Uh, and it's, you know, you're, you're going to sco score lower. Now, but what I do, uh, what I've done in my in-person class, and I'm going to continue here, you can use a, uh, three by five index card to write down kind of key dates, things that you find hard to remember. I know for a lot of people, what kills history for them is they see it as dates and figures and it just is super, super boring. 
uh, that is super boring. It, your instincts are right. That's a horrible way to teach history. It just kills it. The way I teach history, I teach it like a story, like a narrative, but you do have to know some facts. You do have to know when some things happened. You do have to know when some people are. And I make it very clear uh, what dates and what individuals and what events uh, you'll be tested on. Okay, so I teach it like a story. I try to make it entertaining. I think I'm pretty successful in that regard, but you do have to suck it up and you do have to know uh, some of the things that folks hate about history that it states and facts. And, um, but I try to mitigate that by signaling you what you're gonna need to know so you can keep your eye on the big story. And that, that's the key to the success in um, uh, this class. Okay, if you miss a quiz, you know, you have 36 hours to take the quizzes and the midterm. But, you know, as I said before, if life throws you a curve and uh, something happens, just let me know. I can't help you if you don't let me know. Okay, I can't stress this enough. Here's some information on our the history department. Uh, if you have any questions about it, being a history major, or if you'd like to be a history major, uh, um, Ann Hardgrove is the undergrad graduate advisor of record. I'm very happy also to talk to you uh, about the the um, department. It's a strong department. It's very well known for its teaching. Our Gosh, I think five or six of our faculty have won major, major teaching awards. Um, so yeah, if you're looking for a major, history department's really outstanding. And, uh, I, I, and it's nationally known too. Uh, the folks that teach in the department um, are, are well known all, all over the country and very, very highly respected. So it's, we're, we're good researchers and we're also good teachers. And I'll talk to you about my research uh, at some point, but not right now. Okay, so I think I'm gonna just stop there, give you a break, and then talk about another.